In this video, I will talk about uh, something sometimes really confusing to people, uh, which is how shall we decide whether to treat a variable as a fixed effect or a random effect. Uh, well, this is a very tricky question to answer because there's basically no absolutely right answer to it. And um, it usually depends on your situation, I would say, and what kind of problem you're trying to solve and what kind of conclusion you're trying to uh, draw from your analysis. Uh, so I personally have some uh, preferences or I have some criteria myself that you should pay attention to when you're treating variable at fixed error random effects. Uh, there are also some statistical tests for uh, testing this, whether it's fixed or random, and basically well, I don't really trust those tests because this is a sort of like experience or it really depends on the situation that you're at. Um, so my list is probably not full, but uh, uh, just kind of a suggestion to to you. So okay, have a new page. So first of all, let's say we have only one covariate, right? We have a variable, which is a column vector, was very long, uh, and we have some values in it. Let's say if this uh, vector is um, is a measurement of uh, uh, of height, uh, human height. So the first person is 183. Uh, second is 174 centimeter, 166, 178, blah, blah, blah. So if you have a variable x like this, and you want to use this as a covariate in the model and treat it as an effect, um, I would say if you only have oh, if you only have one variable like this or very small number of variables, uh, this kind of continuous scale variable should be usually treated as fixed effects, all right? And the what well, the criteria here is that you don't really have uh, many degrees of freedom lost due due to fitting such a variable. Just using one degree of freedom fitting such a variable. Uh, in your model. So fitting, treating as a fixed effect is a numeric vector with continuous scale, which is really nice. Um, but there are some exceptions, but um, uh, this is my uh, suggestion, I would say. Uh, let's look at another case, right? So in this case, you also have a variable. So long vector of x in this case, let's say you have um, uh, gender or sex. So it can be coded as male or female. Let's call it one and two. So one's male, two is female, like this. Um, it has for this variable only have one two levels. Uh, sometimes. It doesn't really matter if you treat it as fixed or random. I would treat it as fixed effects uh, again because it basically gives you an estimate of the difference between one and two, and it's very easy to interpret. Um, treating it as random effects will not give you too uh, too much gain in the variance component estimate because you have two groups, right? So this is probably should be treated as fixed effect as well. Let's look at another example. Here you have a column of x, long vector like this. So x is here. Let's say you have groups, right? Uh, group one, two, three. And let's call it some group one. So group two, you have three observations. Group three as well, and something else. Um, so 
first of all, you can't fit this fit this, uh, this factor directly as fixed effects because well, these numbers basically are just factors, right? Uh, it's not a the number doesn't mean anything about the magnitude of the group. So uh, you have to treat this as a dummy variable factor uh, fixed effects or random effects. But in this case. Uh, this is similar to the last video when we introduced this uh, one-way ANOVA model one, with one factor, it's like that. So here basically the situation is like you have a number of groups uh, which is a, basically a function of number of observations that you have um, or a sort of uh, proportional to the number of observations. Observations in this case, it's basically, uh, uh, I think it's a third of number of observations is number of groups. So if you fit this as a fixified model, then you end up with many degrees of freedom lost because uh, the number of groups is actually pretty big. It's a proportional to the number of observations. And you don't want the degrees of freedom lost to be proportional to the number of observations that you have in the data set. So usually I would recommend this situation to be fitted as random effects. All right, so this is the situation for random effect. I should pay attention to this and compared to the last uh, example that I showed, we have only two sex or two genders in the vector. Because you can call both of the situations repeated measurement, but uh, situations are different, right? So some factors like gender, you only have two factors as determines. And in this case, sort of the situation is like the levels in the factor, the number of that is proportional to the number of observations. So if you have more data coming in, probably it will lead you to both more observations, but also more groups. Uh, in such a situation, fitting it as a random effect is better because you will be saving degrees of freedom and you have enough sort of some observations within the group to estimate the random effect variance component. So it's really nice to estimate the intra-class correlation and to interpret it as a, a mixed model way. Okay. And then it's a very important thing, right? We are talking about degrees of freedom. So when you fit a model like this, or say you have a y response variable, and you're trying to use a function of a set of x, x1, 2, let's say xk, and y has a length n, right? It's so n by one vector and by one vector. So have k variables are trying to explain the variable y. I have n observations for you to do such an inference or model. Um, so if each of them is regarded as fixed effects, you will lose this number of degrees of freedom. And it's very obvious that you see if you if n if k gets very close to, to n, right, then losing so many degrees of freedom will not leave you so much information to do any inference. So you are ending with, you'll be end up with an um, overfitting problem. And if k is larger than n, there's no way to fit this as a fixified model, right? So if you do a, a linear model like y equal to x beta, plus e, and you have more columns in x than number of rows, this is not a problem that you can solve, uh, basically mathematically even. So you can't fit a fixed value model when you have more covariates than number of, number of observations. So in this case, you have to treat it as random effects. So this is definitely a random effects model. If you treat x as random effects, you will be able to fit this 
uh, big thing. And this is related to the uh, rigid regression. So rigid regression. So rigid regression is actually equivalent to linear mixed model by treating all the covariates as a um, random effects. But instead of, so when you have a lot of columns in that, a lot of U as random effects, this is equivalent to a ridge regression. But something different is that we are estimating the ridge parameter uh, in ridge regression using various components uh, by maximum likelihood, which is better than the traditional ridge regression usually. And also we have the shrinkage estimates for uh, the random effects variables. And we can also include some fixed effects. So you can have both fixed and random, so shrinked and non-shrinked uh, effects together in the model. Uh, so when you have more uh, covariate than number of observations, you should always treat this as random effects. And feeding random effects model is a very powerful way, actually, to deal with such a problem. Um, so that's some short explanation for this. Uh, hopefully it's helpful. Uh, in the next part of the video, I will show you an example how does shrinkage effects work um, using a simple example that we showed last time. Thanks for watching.